What is up, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals of Audio Podcast Land? This is Mikey, the founder of Vibe Tribe Productions, as well as the Dungeon Master for Call of the Deep. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, why are you talking to me right now? Where's the next episode? Well, you see, here's what had happened, right? <laughs> um, in all seriousness... While transferring over some stuff, as we're in the middle at the time of this recording, getting ready to release season two, we, no, I don't actually, not we, I ended up losing some of our audio recordings, and a couple of the sessions from season one are now lost into the ether. I am very distraught, and I blame myself for being so careless. But a lot has been going on, and I can only own up to my mistake. I wanted to make this to not only apologize to the listening audience and to my players, but I wanted to also try to rectify the situation a little bit by giving a recap as to what happened between the last episode and the end of Season 1. If you recall, we... Ended the last part of Season 1 with the Scorched Shield, our party in this campaign, having some small conversations and reaching the top of the mountain where they came across a druid shamaness and her two yeti compatriots. Now, here's how the rest of Season 1 went down. Upon talking to the shamanists more and avoiding a fight with the yetis, they were tasked with going to the Temple of the Weeping Maiden, where they would need to find the Weeping Maiden at the center of the temple and convince her to cure their friend Cold and his incorporeal body. The shamanists opened a gateway to the temple and our party stepped forth, where... Coming across a different plane of existence of this temple, they entered and found that they would need to divide themselves into three groups to take on three different tasks before reaching the center of the temple. Each party member decided to split up. In one group, we had Amino and Hugh take on a statue puzzle. We had the group of Dadek and Ferin take on a puzzle that had to deal with skipping stones over the surface of a water. And our final group, which contained Cold, Tidak, and our new found friend Sorin, taking on a floor puzzle that required them to turn off the lights and use a black light fish they found to guide them in the correct direction. Once our party reconvened and opened the doorway, they had a moment's rest and learned a little more about the mournful maiden and her story before reaching the inner chamber. Upon entering, they were greeted by the mournful maiden and needed to prove their mettle. So they ended up in a fight with her two guardian statues, and then in a back and forth, which resulted in a lot of our party losing a lot of HP, but ended up coming out victorious. Impressed by their newfound courage, and their will to do what it takes to help a friend, the mournful maiden had a cold step into her chamber where she began the process of fixing his incorporeal curse. While he was asleep, cold was met with one of the Council of Twelve, the god of knowledge, Ives, and in a nice turn of events, he made a pact with Ives, and Cold not only got his body back, but now is the harbinger and the mark bearer for the God of Knowledge, who essentially is kind of like a voice in his head, but also an incorporeal version of him just without all the power. 
And in that conversation, I thus said that the rest of the Council of Twelve needed to be found in order to restore order to the land. Upon waking up from his procedure, our party said their farewells to the mournful maiden and exited the temple, returning back to Gunderland. After telling the shamaness of their success, she decided that Cold needed to get used to his newfound body and his newfound powers, so for the moment Cold departed the Scorch Shield as the rest of them headed back to Gunderland and reported to King Red X exactly what had happened. Our party had a, one more evening in the town, so they all decided to do a variety of things which resulted in some more fight club stuff, some nice conversations by the beach, and because of our monk's overpowered abilities, he was able to impress a Goliath who happily joined the crew upon recruitment. Our party ended up waking up the next morning, and after saying their goodbyes, not only were they greeted to a new ship thanks to their new Goliath friend, but they also gained a couple of new crew members. Besides our Goliath, Jurgen Ironheart, we were also given Majila, our merchant, who would help them with anything that needed to be done trade-wise, and King Red Axe has decided to lend Fila to the crew to continue on in their adventure. Our, the Scorch Sealed set forth and headed to Waterdeep, the first destination on their quest to retrieve Kalina's candor. Upon making it to Waterdeep, they met Lady Red Axe, King Red Axe's daughter, and the open lord of Waterdeep. After getting in and having a nice little feast, Lady Red Axe tasked our party to help with a small favor, which required them to help one of the more affluent merchant families in Waterdeep to help retrieve a genie bottle from the local gambling den. Well, within this conversation and formulating a plan, our party was met with our Rakshasa, who was familiar with our lovely little ankle biter. After poking the bear, so to speak, Ty Dag got turned into a cat and got whisked away to the gambling den known as the Lady Luck, which forced our party to not only retrieve the genie bottle, but also to get their party member back. Upon arriving at the Lady Luck, through some conversation and some investigation, it was revealed that this particular gambling den was owned by a dragon. Yeah, there's no way of putting it. And so forth, she was not too happy with everything going on, so therefore our party entered a fight with one of her creatures in her establishment. Half of the party was fighting that, and half of the party went to go retrieve Tidak, where it was revealed that he was not in any harm, and the Rakshasa wants to meet Corvus at a later time once he gets to the city of Neverwinter. Now... After a fight, the owner of the Lady Luck decided that they are no longer welcome, so they take the genie bottle and their friend and return back to the castle to rest for the evening. The last thing that was really interesting is that after berating the son of the affluent merchant, Ferrin ended up entering a friendship slash pact with the genie inside of the bottle, Calipticos. So now, Ferrin has been gifted the bottle from the genie, and owner is not the correct way I would put it, but Ferrin now has a genie friend to call on when they need, so that is very interesting. And that is what you need to know in order to prepare yourself for Season 2 of Call of the Deep. 
I again apologize for being so careless and losing all of the previous sessions, but I do hope you stick around and I'm really excited where season two goes because now story beats begin to thicken and we enter a new arc now that our characters are aware of a greater conflict on the world. But you're going to have to come back for next episode to see how this all begins. So until then, my friends, remember, love yourself, take care of you, and keep those good times rolling. We'll see you for the season two premiere of Call of the Deep. Ta-ta for now.